Aloha. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. This is Master Paul coming, connecting to you today from Honolulu, Hawaii, where it is the afternoon. Many of you watching are tuning in at 1 and 2 in the morning in Europe, and some of you are just rubbing the sleep out of your eyes in India. But no matter where in the world you are, I'm very happy to connect with you. And my name is Master Paul, and I am sharing with you today the third day in a four-day series on the subject of gratitude. And this uh, subject is receiving good reception. A lot of people are really enjoying it. Uh, thank you, Kristen Rojas, for her sharing to some of the groups who have been able to have a lot of new people tuning in to this uh, series and hopefully to all of the wisdom, guidance, and blessings that's being offered. If you're new, just tuning in, this is the third day. Today we'll be focusing on gratitude on relationships. And on the first and second day, first day I focused on gratitude for our Creator and all the beings of light who serve us, uh, guides, angels, saints, etc. And yesterday I focused on gratitude for Mother Earth. And it was very powerful, very good practices that we were able to connect with. And today uh, is going to be focusing on <laughs> Gratitude with our relationships. And I, I snickered because sometimes that's not so easy to have gratitude for those special people in our life. Um, there is, of course, different kinds of relationships, and we'll cover those varying uh, layers of relationships that we have, including direct family, brothers and sisters, uh, spouses, and even good friends, and some people that we would definitely not call friends, but they are in a relationship with us and it does definitely impact us <clears throat> and so there are some deep uh, soul secrets regarding the nature of relationship and the power and the significance of resolving whatever relationship problems we have in this experience this time around because if we don't fix it this time guys it's not gonna just go away because we want it to and that's some of the wisdom we'll be talking about today as well so not only the good stuff and how to maintain the healthy relationships, but also how to, um, how to resolve the ones that aren't so wonderful, how to address them the right way with gratitude. So that's what you can expect. I encourage all those that are new, just tuning in, to stick around for this live stream. It should be very valuable for you. <clears throat> if for some reason you're interested but have to run, please hit the subscribe button. You'll know when I go live. Uh, and subscribe on my Facebook page. And then also you can come back to my page and you can watch it uh, at your desire. Also listed above my video is access to my podcast and the previous videos. So once you are uh, uh, a friend and you are tuned in <coughs> uh, through the subscribe, and then you can always come back and watch them later. Of course, if you're always on the go, the podcasts are very effective for that. Podcasts run about a week late, but you can listen to it per your leisure wherever you'd like to. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, to tune in later. So welcome to everybody that's tuning in today. Um, the numbers are jumping up and down in the live stream, so I'm waiting for Facebook to catch up. Last couple of days, though, we did use the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony a couple of times. Today I have a special treat for all of those, especially those that appreciate love, peace, and harmony. Uh, I have a special blessing for you. Something that will only be given to those that stick around to the end. So I do recommend you stick around to the end. <clears throat> and so as uh, Facebook goes out and gathers more souls, right now it doesn't appear to be that many. Um, so either everybody is doing really, really well with their relationships, they're already very grateful, or we have a lot of people in denial. I'm not sure which one it is at this point in time. But, um, or maybe people are just busy on this Wednesday. So let's check in with who's showing up so far. Welcome, Bonnie Robinson. Aloha, uh, Kristen Rojas. And welcome also to Jose. Welcome, Lindsay Lay. Aloha, Janice. Aloha, Suki Singh. Welcome, Dan Martino. Welcome, Stephanie Cannon. <coughs> and Stephanie Cannon's mother. I know she tunes in when she can. Welcome also to Kathleen Monahan. And welcome Claire Egan. Welcome Lillian Kaur. Aloha to all of you. Welcome Susan Birchmore. And welcome also to Angie Taylor and Nicole Talish Curtis. Aloha. 
Welcome Sherry Jarman. And aloha Lisa Zarniak. Welcome also to Deborah Anderson. And Linda Jansen. Aloha Linda. Welcome Amir. Welcome NNC. Aloha Ali. And welcome Jessica. Welcome Chloe if you're watching. Welcome to Gina Vittoria Nanetti. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, I was chatting with one of the students this morning, and uh, they were going through some difficult time this last week or so. I think most of us go through those. And for that student, and probably for a lot of us, it's difficult to stay in a place of gratitude. But one of the reasons why is the nature of the mind, what I refer to as the monkey mind. And I'm going to touch on this for a little bit because we can talk about gratitude all day long, but life uh, will, will tend to continue to beat us over the head a bit here and there. And so how do we remain in this place? How do we keep our head on straight, so to speak? Uh, the, the short answer is get out of your head. Stay in your heart. And again, easy to say, not so easy to accomplish all the time, but it is absolutely possible. Uh, many of us are far too tied up in the stress of the day. Um, and some of us, I could easily say, truly say, there is an addiction to stress. Now, some of you might argue with that. I don't want it. But we keep signing up for it every day. Um, so on some levels, we get a rush out of it. And on some levels, we truly don't want it, but we don't know how to turn it off. Well, what causes stress? What causes stress is very simple. Living too much in the past or too much in the future. Very simple. Eckhart Tolle wisdom, right? And the answer is, of course, being in the present. And when you are in a place of gratitude, it's much easier to be in the present. When you are vacillating on the past, woe is me, why'd they do that to me? Uh, I don't understand why my life sucks so much. It's hard to be in a place of gratitude. When we are in the future, unless we're visualizing a very positive future, usually future and future possibilities and future predictions are filled with fear, worry, uh, concern, oh my gods, and bucket loads of whatever we're not really wanting. So the monkey mind is in, e in essence keeping you from being in the present. It's forcing you either into the future or into the past. And you are the driver of your machine. So if you truly want to not be in a place of stress, if you truly want to uh, change things, then you have to be present. And present requires you to catch yourself in the past or in the future. And it's pretty easy to do. Because if you're not in a place of happiness and gratitude, if you're not in a place of enjoyment, then you are most likely stuck in the past or uh, in a place of fear about the future. Neither of which are helping you to manifest what you want to manifest. Simple ABC manifestation rules are you get what you focus on. Are you really enjoying what you, is in your current experience, the stress, the lack of gratitude? Are you enjoying that? If not, Step up to the plate, take responsibility, stop allowing yourself and your monkey mind to control your past and to yank you into the future in fear and all that useless stuff. When we uh, stay in that place of gratitude in the present moment, which we're going to talk about relationships today and tomorrow, we're going to be talking about gratitude for our present self. Um, we can handle a lot more of the situations. So. Uh, let's go ahead and connect and now that we've got the majority of souls joining us if you have not already hit the share button please do so let other people know about this and then we will um, connect heart to heart soul to soul and uh, move into the blessings teachings and wisdom okay <clears throat> so placing our hand in soul light soul service hand position dropping the left hand in front of the heart center right hand gently pointed towards heaven let us close our eyes let us connect. Dear our beloved Creator, all layers of creation, divine Tao and Source, dear the soul of all the beings of light serving the plan of the light side, 
Beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, Masters, Ascended Masters, Lamas, Gurus, Sifu, Saints, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Angels, Healing Angels and Archangels. Our individual Heavens team guides angels and saints. We love you all, honor you all, appreciate you all, respect you all. We ask you most humbly, most sincerely to please be present. To come to sit in our heart centers, bless us to fully open and develop our awakening, our gratitude. Please bless us to be more in control of our monkey mind, releasing the vacillations on the past, releasing the fears and apprehensions of the future. We're very grateful. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, appreciate you. We invite you to please turn on and be present. And we ask that as we chant this mantra, to serve unconditionally, to gather heart to heart, soul to soul, that you please offer a healing blessing for everyone's request. So for all those that are new listening or watching for the first time, this is a mantra that is chanted all over the world in over 40 languages. It has been posted by Kristen in the chat boxes, and you can learn more there. And we'll be using it a couple times a day to bring uh, balance to our relationships. Okay. Welcome also to Julia. Welcome Sonia. Welcome Candy. Welcome also to, uh, to Bibi Perez. <clears throat> so close your eyes, receive the blessing. Let us begin. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. Lu la lu la li lu la. Lu la li lu la. Lu la li lu la. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. Lu la lu la li lu la. Lu la ha li lu la. Lu la li lu la. Oh, I, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So aloha and welcome to Nebedita. Welcome also to Angie Kinney, to any of the additional souls that have come in that I haven't seen your name or acknowledged you. Love you too. Thank you for joining. Thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about today's uh, wisdom teaching and blessings. <clears throat> so, the last few days we have been focusing on gratitude in a series. And the first gratitude was to our Creator. A lot of us had shaken our fist at, at God, at our Creator, whatever name you go by. And a lot of us have um, basically uh, been disconnected. Um, we stay connected when we're suffering, when we're in pain, we ask for help, support, and whatnot. But very often we are not in a place of gratitude when we are not in a place of pain. Sometimes things can be very good for us and we'll stop and say, thank you, God. But the key of that practice on Monday was to awaken our hearts and souls to the fact, the fact that we are surrounded one million percent of the time with beings of light, our heavens team guides angels and saints, 
Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Jesus, our Creator, and more. Literally, we are bathed in this light. Doesn't feel like it sometimes because it can get so dark and heavy, but that is the karma. Uh, but regardless of the spiritual debts that make it feel like they are not there, they are always constant and present. And their love is unconditional. So when we stay in a place of gratitude, and when we apply the wisdom that I started out with, by not staying in a place of, of um, the past and how you have been beaten down and how life has dealt you a, a dirty hand and blah, 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 blah. You know, I could break out the violin and everyone's got their sob story. It doesn't change your future to stay in that sob story. Is there any value in staying there? Really? So what about fascinating in the future? Oh my God, where is this going to come from? What about money that? What about job this? What about health that? What about this? Is that going to help your future? Really? So is there any value whatsoever in being in the past or in the future? In my experience, the answer is no. Maybe you found something different, but again, easy to say, not so easy to actually bump ourselves out of. So we have to be, um, we have to make it a, a choice, really. Uh, the way I make choices, especially when I'm very stuck, is um, I get upset, actually. Uh, I have a self-conversation and um, I say, you know what, I'm, I'm fed up with this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being uh, wrangled around like somebody stuck a hook in my nose and says, I'm going to fear this. I'm going to fear this. I, you know, I'm going to walk around in stress my whole life. That's the monkey mind controlling us in the future in fear. That's not you. That's not your soul. That is everything but your soul. That is your karma. Okay. So think about the cows that have the rings and, and somebody pulling the cow. Well, it's your karma pulling you into that future fear. Okay, so every time you catch yourself in that fear based place, visualize that you are the cow with the rings being pulled around and get upset about it if that's what it takes or laugh at it because it's kind of amusing when you think about it. But make a conscious agreement to uh, to not to be the cow that gets yanked around by the monkey mind future based fears because you cannot possibly create your future of gratitude if you stay in that place of being the cow getting pulled around. Okay. Same thing when you're wallowing in all the crud of the past. Um, you know, that's just like you're the, the, you're the donkey sitting down and somebody's pulling on you trying to get you to walk forward. You ever seen those movies where the donkey's sitting on his butt and the guy's just pulling on him and the donkey's not moving? Well, that's you when you're stuck in the past. No, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay here in my little old pity party. That's not going to benefit your gratitude based future. Okay. So you're either the donkey sitting on your butt or you're the mule getting pulled or the, the cow getting pulled around. If you're enjoying both of those, by all means, stay there. <clears throat> gratitude is about seeing everything good in your present. No matter how hard it might be to find, you need to find it. Many times we can find it in our relationships. Okay. Our relationships can be a place of gratitude, even if it's just two or three people that, that comprise our seven or eight of our closest relationships. Wherever we can find gratitude, we need to. Are you alive? Okay. Are you breathing? Is there food in the fridge? Those are the easy ones. The hard ones are the ones that you need to get a little bit better at. Okay. Gratitude can be uh, for those things that are unpleasant. We've all had our share of unpleasant relationships, unpleasant experiences, unpleasant financial conditions, or unpleasant whatever. It doesn't matter. We all have our versions of it. But when we put our focus on those unpleasant things, we are the donkey sitting down refusing to move. Um, obviously, that's not the best place we need to be. We can consciously look at that and change its power over us. This is the past now. We can look at it and change its power over us with gratitude. <clears throat> Everything that you're vacillating on from the past has taught you a great deal. There's an area of gratitude. That individual could have helped you clear up karma. Because what if that individual was an ex 
and the ex left you and you have your pity potty story about it and you lost the house and whatever else, okay? But what if that was the biggest favor of all your lifetimes? Because what if you were the ex? What if you were the ex who dumped on the other person, who took the house from the person you are now and so forth? In other words, you don't know uh, the source of the what brought you the pity party in the past. And in order to dissolve its power over you, if you're one of those that sticks, stays a lot in the past, then you need to look at it for the gratitude that it, uh, that it can offer to you. Um, so it, it has wisdom. It, 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 it has brought you the opportunity to grow and change and choose a different set of experiences. It may have brought you the opportunity to clear up a karma blockage because if in this example, it was an ex that dumped on you and you're crying and wah, 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 wah. What if you were the ex that dumped on them and they were the one crying? And what if you guys have played this match of tennis for the last 20 lifetimes, okay? You can stay in your pity party and blame it them, but then you play tennis next time around. I don't think that's what you want to do. So instead, move into gratitude. Much wiser choice, far greater way of clearing up the blockage, because even if you had not been playing tennis, right? Even if this is the first time around and this person just dumped on you and you're in this, you know, woe is me place, you forgive them and you're grateful for the opportunity of having the wisdom of forgiveness. And you're grateful for the opportunity to never have to do it again or never having to be the person in the future that reminds them and then they forget that you're reminding them so they dump on you when you guys play the tennis match. Don't be the tennis match. Don't be the tennis ball. Be the intelligent one that moves into gratitude to dissolve the past stuff that inhibits you from having healthy relationships. Because if you're one of those that gets stuck in the past a lot, <clears throat> and you're unable to find gratitude for everything, regardless of what it is, then you absolutely will not manifest the future you want. You will not be grateful for the things that you can be in the future because you're stuck back here. So you have, you have to resolve it. No, there's no way around it. So when you um, get, find yourself getting stuck in the past, you simply look at it and you ask, and you have to actually think a little bit. What about this can I be grateful for? So I want to stop for just a moment, acknowledge those who are, who've joined in. So welcome, Tanya. Uh, welcome also, Becky Lafave. Welcome, Lou. Welcome, Crystal. Welcome, Nancy Chapman. Aloha, Shirley. Aloha, Emma. Aloha, Carol. Thank you for coming. So we catch ourselves in the past. And a lot of us, we get stuck. I, how can I possibly be grateful for anything with this blah, 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 okay? Let's break it down. If it's financial, you're grateful that you have the opportunity to see that your spiritual debts of you and your ancestors have brought financial blockages to you. And you're grateful for the opportunity to practice more, forgiveness practice, to chant more, to serve others, to bring them financial blessings. You're grateful for the opportunity that you can clear this up. You're grateful that you're seeing it and you say, I'm no longer going to focus on this negative financial condition. I am going to be grateful that I see it for what it is and I'm going to stay in a place of gratitude for all that I have. This negative financial condition from the past is serving me uh, by keep reminding me to stay positive now and then I'll manifest more positivity and better financial conditions in the future. So the past is always there to serve us not keep us stuck in the past, but we have to find a place of gratitude. So we have an unpleasant relationship. I just gave you an example of that. What about an unpleasant job? I get texts and emails about people, oh, I'm stuck in my dead end job. I don't know what to do. I'm stressed. Okay. I've been there. No different. I was just looking at, at, a, at a post. I purposely went back and looked at a post when I was elevated to, this, to the uh, status, bowed my head to my teacher of a, a certified master teacher and it's 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 uh, one of the biggest blessings probably the biggest blessing ever in all my lifetimes um, and I saw the picture of what I was wearing at that time I was delivering food now I did healing but not enough people knew about me or trusted how I could serve so I had to deliver food to help offset my income 
I had to let go of all forms of ego and just step up to the plate and do the right thing. But I wasn't vacillating in it. I saw that it was going to lead me to a future. I made a choice to bring an income to help me to move to the future that I wanted. When we wane in the past, we are not in a place of gratitude. I was grateful that I was getting a job. I was grateful whenever somebody didn't tip me when I did the food delivery. I said, thank you. Please forgive me for any time I have shysted you or your ancestors. I, t I eventually became one of the tip persons that received the biggest tips. I didn't change anything the way I did anything, but I received more tips than virtually everybody. Um, why? Because I kept the focus in the right place. I kept it in the present moment. So hopefully you can learn that when these things bring themselves to us, they're learning opportunities. They're opportunities to be grateful. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's work. It doesn't matter if it's relationship. It doesn't matter if it's finance. If you find yourself stuck in the past, Find the place of gratitude with it and convert it so that your present moment has opportunities for gratitude, opportunities for a good and positive manifestation. Okay? Now, future. With each new moment, you step into your future. You wake up, you step into your future. Uh, you wake up next to the spouse next to you that you have trouble with and problems with. Uh, you wake up to the spouse next to you that you love dearly, but you have significant issues with the mother-in-law. You wait, you know, we all have our relationship issues, right? doesn't matter what the conditions are. So when we wake up in each new day, we still have various relationship niceties and various relationship problems. Now, some of us, we have no relationship and we're crying and whining about that. Okay. And so that's our place of fear, our place of, uh, of uh, uh, insecurity, insufficiency, uh, I'm not enough, uh, I have to have my hair done like this and have to lose 20 pounds and I have to have that blah, 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 to be lovable enough, you know. So either you're in a relationship that you're unhappy with or uh, somebody close to you that's impacting you or you're not in one. And so when you're not in one, that takes you back to the past of, oh my God, if I had just done this or not done that, then I would have been able to be in that relationship. And I can't believe that that person is now with this person. And where are you at? Right? Watch the monkey mind. Watch it. Laugh at it. Are you the donkey sitting on your butt wallowing in the past relationship? Or are you in the future? Oh my God, no one's ever going to love me. Oh my God, I'm never going to be lovable. Oh my God, I'm going to die an old maid, an old man. Where is your thoughts? Who's in control of the monkey mind? Is someone got you by the nose? That's the future. You should be laughing a lot right now. You should be laughing going, yep, that's me. Been there, done that. Are you enjoying it? Really? You need to be able to laugh at yourself, to jerk yourself out of the fear in the future, the anxiety and all the other crap. And you need to be able to put a tack under your butt if you're the donkey in the past. The tack under your butt can also be laughing. Oh, I'm in the past again. Okay, what am I going to learn about this? Almost always when you find yourself in the past, you're that, you, you ever go to the river and, you know, in the river, there's uh, the, the sea, the riverbed, you know, there's rocks, they go up and down a little bit. And, and sometimes you find a solid, you know, swath of rock, maybe it's 10, 20 foot long, right? You ever see the riverbeds like that? We have this nice long rock um, and it's under the water. And then you'll see like a, like a, like a drilled down, you know, kind of a cubby hole in that rock. It might be a few inches wide. It might be this big. And if you look in that, there's a rock inside there. And it's spinning around in a circle. Well, that's an example of you and me when we're stuck in the past. It's going around in that circle, going around in that circle. You have to fill that in. You fill it in with gratitude. Okay? The future is very often fear-based from the past. You have to work on both, guys. It's not something where you're going to have these excellent relationships moving forward. If you don't deal with the crud, not going to happen. How can you have gratitude for somebody that dumped on you 
or for the current relationship you're in which is not going the way you want it to go, or for no relationship at all, how can you have gratitude? You fix the past, like we just talked about, and in the present moment, you find a place of gratitude about the present moment. Because there's a reason you don't have that relationship. Guarantee. There is a reason why the person in your life is awesome, but the mother-in-law is not. There is a reason why that person in your life is not so awesome. These are not accidents. And to sit there and wake up every day in that place of disappointment, fear, anxiety, whatever else you're waking up in, to stay there instead of being in a place of gratitude, I don't recommend it. I, 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 don't, I, I, can't, I can't even think of one sentence that would say there's something good about it with the exception of it's an opportunity to grow. No different than when we look at the past, we must look at our place we find ourselves in when we're future thinking, which almost always brings us significant amounts of stress. And we have to look at it and say, where is my learning opportunity here? Every moment gives us an opportunity to be in a place of gratitude. It doesn't matter if it's past or the future. It simply doesn't matter. Now, I am by no stretch of the imagination perfect. Very easy for me to talk to. Very easy for me to fail also. Very easy for me to be the cow in the future getting pulled around. But I catch myself a lot more now. I don't allow it to stick around very long. Okay? And it's taken practice. It's taken years. This is not a race, guys. This is, this is our life. This is a journey. It's called a soul journey for a reason. But this soul journey does not have to be miserable. It does not have to be miserable. It's only miserable because we refuse to wake up, step up to the plate, take responsibility, apply the wisdom that I've been sharing for over a year now, and put them into place each and every day, each and every moment, as much as you possibly can. There's no, uh, there's no secret to why we suffer, whether it's past or future, right? We're suffering because we haven't learned anything. Let's take the opportunity to learn. So when we find ourselves without a relationship, let's find out why. Let's ask the better question. Why am I without a relationship? Am I focusing on not having a relationship because I'm fearful about not being good enough, cute enough, skinny enough, fat enough, uh, because I'm not smart enough, because I don't have enough money, because uh, my teeth are crooked, because my hair is too long, my hair is too short, because my hair is gray, because my hair is blonde. You know, how many fears, right? That was just off the top of my cusp. If you wallow in those fears, you are pushing away a relationship. That is future fears. Why might you follow them? Maybe because boyfriend or girlfriend one or two from the past said, you're not tall enough, you're not short enough, you don't weigh enough, you don't weigh too little, you're too skinny, you're too fat, I like blonde. What relevance does that have? Only relevance that we give it, right? You see the connection from the past and the future? It's all connected, guys. It only requires you to see it and go, oh, I am grateful that I see this connection. The past is causing my fear in the future. I have the opportunity to be grateful that I see it. That's where you start out with the gratitude. I am grateful that I can ask forgiveness because if I in any lifetime have ever told my lover that I don't want them anymore because they're too this or too that or I don't want them anymore because they're not rich enough, tall enough, short enough, fat enough, skinny enough, uh, whatever enough, right? And then this person said it to me, then that's also keeping me in a fear-based place, not allowing me to have a relationship. There's always connectivity. You just have to be willing to stop and breathe and make the shift instead of just ah, 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 stress, 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 stress. Future relationship with someone that you're already with, okay? In this example, we'll say you're not happy. You've been with them two years, five years, 20 years. It's boring, no sex, whatever, okay? We all have our dramas. Every relationship is fixable. <laughs> I mean that, okay? And it's honestly 
not as hard as one would think because if you actually apply everything I've been teaching this whole year the relationship will go in one of two directions it will naturally write and fix itself like when you're driving in the car kind of corrects itself or it will happily in a good and pleasant manner dissolve which brings more fear for a lot of people but um, if you actually apply the wisdom if it self writes itself it will happen because you've been working the practice you've been working the gratitude you've been doing the forgiveness where it shows up and where you need to you recognize how do you discern where to ask forgiveness in a relationship where is the suffering I re I'll repeat again and again and again where is the suffering uh, there's no romance there's no this this person doesn't listen to me they don't truly understand my feelings and my needs um, you know they're philanderer you know wh wherever the pain is doesn't matter okay um, they're a good husband to the kids but and that's why I stay in it but they're not a good husband to me because blah 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 right you all got your list um, that is where the karma is you have to offer forgiveness you have to ask for forgiveness for being that exact way to that soul in a previous time I know it sucks doesn't it what do you mean they're this way towards me why do I have to ask for forgiveness because if you're in a relationship for my, my rule of thumb is if you're in a relationship for more than six months with somebody it's highly 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 like highly likely you have been with them before okay and the longer the relationship the 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 higher probability you've been with them before many times if you've been with anybody before that means you have karma and if you have problems in your relationship that means you have karma what is the karma how do you define it very simple where is your pain that's what you did to them okay it's not rocket scientists be very straight up about it don't be in denial about it when you do your part by being deeply authentic and ask for forgiveness for not being nurturing for not being romantic for not being caring for being distant mentally whatever it is you isolate and identify that quote they are doing to you because that's taking blame right that's taking responsibility when you start to dissolve it offer forgiveness ask for forgiveness bring love and compassion into the relationship what happens is the relationship fixes itself why because you're clearing the karma in the relationship soul the relationship soul is not you it's not him or her the relationship soul is the karma between you two that's been going on many lifetimes you do the practices around that you do the love and gratitude to the soul you ask forgiveness for all of your pain and suffering you offer forgiveness for all the pain and suffering quote they caused you because you might have been one causing it first and you don't know either way what happens is there's a decompression instead of all the stress that people have been dealing with in their relationships there's a natural decompression now you have to be patient you do this one time and think there's going to be a result you're, you're you're just smoking something okay you have to do this for a while you have to be honest and persistent and open-hearted you have to be the person that you want to uh, them to be towards you that doesn't mean if they're violent towards you 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 stay in a relationship you absolutely do forgiveness about being violent towards them in previous times you dissolve that karma you do the best you can but you don't keep yourself in a place of suffering I'm not saying do that be intelligent but recognize there's a reason why the suffering is coming okay uh, at the same time as you do this one month two months three months three, six months whatever you do the relationship starts to fix itself all of a sudden that individual you've been in a relationship with for a long time they become nicer a little more attentive a little more romance a little more whatever okay and you just keep doing it don't stop there will be a point in time where the communication will be open and open-hearted enough where they'll actually hear you probably for the first time in who knows how many years and you can say you know I would really appreciate it if we did this a little bit more or didn't do this so much and they'll hear you and respond you might have said the same thing a year earlier and it was like you know 
thunk and then falls down, right? We've all had that experience. Why all of a sudden can they hear you this time? Because you cleared the spiritual debts, you did the work. Now the other possibility is they just go a different direction, okay? And you set yourself up to no longer have that unpleasant common relationship with that soul ever again. And you set yourself up for a healthy relationship. Why? Because if you don't learn the lesson in the one you're in, you're just going to get another one just like it. Wake up and smell the roses, guys. This is the nature of how life works. We must learn from our mistakes. So gratitude is seeing everything I just described. Gratitude is going, aha, doing the V8 on your own forehead. Okay. I see it for exactly what it is now. That's gratitude. Gratitude is I'm grateful for the opportunity to see that all the suffering that I've been experiencing, I very much could have caused it. Now I'm going to do my part and bring love and compassion into this relationship. And it's going to take a little bit of time. I'm willing to put in the time because I'm already, you know, with this soul. I'd like it to work out if it's supposed to and meant to, but I got to do my part. There's a reason why it's not what I want it to be. Okay. After you get it back to a place of healthiness, you can make a lot of changes and that change might be go away. It might be stay together. If the changes go away, it's very, very likely it will be a positive and beneficial departure from each other versus a violent one. The violent ones are because the karma is still there. You see what I'm saying? It will fix itself. If you do your part, you start with gratitude for the awareness. You do all of the practices with gratitude. Okay. So this is all Master Shah's teachings about being gratitude, being grateful and everything else. I just have the, the ability to explain it to you in common ways in life. Okay. So thank you, God. Thank you, heaven for giving me the intelligence to be able to uh, teach people in a way where they can apply it in their life. So speaking of that, Fania, you're very welcome. I am going to now offer you all a very, very big uh, treasure. I should say Master Shah, my spiritual teacher and father, um, has gifted this treasure in one of his books and I am going to share it with you. He has gifted this to humanity to help humanity to help us with our gratitude and our relationships and everything else. Okay. I'm grateful for your responses. It sounds like the information is being received well. So this is from the Tao Song Tao Dance book. You're more than welcome to get it. One of his best books, in my opinion. It's a little bit on the advanced side, so you got to consider yourself to be a little bit more on the advanced spiritual path. I would not step into this one if you are not in an advanced spiritual path yet. You're still kind of on the learning phases. I'd probably start out with like power of soul, something like that. The teacher, the person, the author, if you're interested, is a doctor and master Shah, S-H-A. Um, you can Google it. You'll find it pretty easily in Amazon or whatnot. But anyway, um, in his books, uh, he transmits power into what's called downloads. I will be uh, sharing one of these downloads with you today, and it is an extraordinary one. I'm going to give you a little bit of information on it first. Uh, when Master Shah first started offering these, um, uh, he heaven heaven gave him you know heaven told him one day they said you know Master Shah um, you need to leave treasures for humanity because some at some point in time you're not going to be here so we, we need to leave something for humanity and he said well how do I do that and he said we're going to give you um, power to transmit power into books he's like wonderful so for about 15 years now in except for the last one or two books he's been putting transmissions in the books. And the transmissions, all you have to do is just read it and then you receive it if it's something you're willing to receive. Um, as, a, as a master teacher, I've been given the uh, authority to transmit it to you. Now, when he started, they were called soul transplants and they were what's called the divine level. Uh, everything has layers, everything has frequencies, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, but the uh, Heaven has frequencies too. You know, not all saints are equal, not all Buddhas are equal, um, and so forth. And so heaven has layers. And so when Master Shah started out, he started uh, transmitting to these books the first layer 
uh, and the divine level, God level. And um, uh, but since then, as he has become a better servant to humanity, as he has saved more lives, as he has helped more people, as he has helped humanity to wake up to love and peace and harmony, uh, he has been given higher abilities to transmit higher power and treasures to uh, these books that are being left to humanity. And so this book is one of his most recent ones, therefore it carries most one of the highest powers. And so it's a Tao level, golden light ball and golden liquid spring. This particular one is the Tao song, not the divine song, the Tao song of love, peace, and harmony, soul, mind, body, transplants. Now, probably hard to grasp what the value of that is. But the song, the divine soul song of love, peace, and harmony is directly connected to this. The divine soul song of love, peace, and harmony has been uplifted many, many times. So its frequency is extraordinary. It's, it's a healer all by itself. Uh, I'll say that a hundred times till you guys figure it out and start offering healing to your children, your, your loved ones, your family, your friends, and others. Use the song to heal. Use the song to heal. I'm telling you, when you talk to your best friend and they're complaining about a headache, let me offer you a blessing and sing them the song for five minutes. I promise you that song will help them. Okay? It's not just listening to it. The song heals. I challenge you to try it. This transmission is a permanent, three permanents, a soul, a mind, and a body, jindan, which is a light ball. And the first one is for the Tao love. The second one is for Tao peace and Tao harmony. Tao love and peace and harmony. Three different ones. Song. You have the soul version, the uh, body version, and the matter version. The energy and the matter version. All three will come to you uh, if you're ready to receive. It's a choice. And um, these will permanently be a part of your soul. So every time you chant love, peace, and harmony, this will be activated. And the power of your song as you chant it will be dramatically enhanced to both serve your soul journey and to serve others to use it for forgiveness for the relationship blockages so we can be in a place of gratitude right and so it's very very important to recognize that if you choose to receive this because it is optional then um, uh, the the service that you can do with it to dissolve uh, relationship blockages to help you stay in a place of gratitude is extraordinary okay um, so I hope uh, that explanation helps you to grasp the power of it. It is not limited to just, you know, what we're talking about today. You can use it to serve others. Uh, and I will continue to remind you of that so that you recognize you have the power. You know, one of, one of my teachers, uh, he has three empowerments, he calls them, in, in, in front of every single one of his 21 books, the three empowerments. One of them is, I have the power to heal myself. You have the power to heal yourself. Together we have the power to heal the world. This is an empowerment in all 21 books. He hasn't ever changed it. So uh, know that you have the power to heal other people. Um, we know that conceptually, but we all wonder, you know, well, uh, you know, do I really? Yes, you do, especially with this. So if you are new, you just tuned in, you're like, what the heck is this? I'm not sure if I want this. Great. Don't worry about it. This is a conversation between you and heaven. This is the Tao order of Tao Golden Light Ball and Golden Liquid Spring of Tao Love, Peace and Harmony song transmitted to your soul. Tell heaven if you're interested. You don't have to tell me. Tell heaven. The other one giving it to you anyway. Give me a moment to prepare. And if you're not interested, not interested in receiving, just tell heaven also. How prepare to receive. Thou order through the authorities received by my teacher to read these transmissions and transmit them to all those watching, all those listening. As appropriate, thou order, thou golden light ball, golden liquid spring, 
of Tao Song, of Tao Love, Peace, and Harmony, Soul, Mind, Body Transplants. Prepare to receive. Transmission! Tao Order. Join Tao Song of Tao Love, Peace, and Harmony, Soul, Mind, Body Transplants as one. Transmission! Continue to connect. Notice if you feel anything, see anything with your third eye. Notice any change of energy in your body. Keep your eyes closed. Repeat after me. Dear my Tao, golden light ball and golden liquid spring of Tao song of love, peace, and harmony. I love you, Ani. Appreciate you. Please turn on. As I do my practices today and any time I offer any forgiveness practice or any blessing to any soul, can you please turn on and offer your additional blessings? I am very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So welcome also to some of the new folks who just came in. <clears throat> welcome Wanda and welcome Mamata. I don't know if you just came in and received this transmission that was just offered uh, as a blessing to assist you with transforming aspects of your life. If you did not, then please go back and watch the recording. So now we will use this treasure <clears throat> to assist us with clearing our blockages. All right. So let us place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center, the right hand gently pointed towards heaven. And let us do the blessings for, uh, let's choose a specific relationship. Or if you are, if you're out of relationship and we're going to address that. Okay. So it's healing a relationship or uh, attracting one to you. But if you'll follow my lead on the practice, okay? Close your eyes. Plug in the words accordingly. Dear Divine Tao and Source, dear the soul of the transmission of love, peace, and harmony, Tao song I just received. Dear the soul of the song, love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes. I love you, Ani, respect you. Thank you for your unconditional service. Could you please bless all the souls that I call at this time to assist me and them with releasing our blockages? Dear the soul of the person I am in relationship with now that I would like to improve this relationship with, please come. So you would state their name. And their soul is in front of you when you called their name. Dear the soul of, this is if you are searching for a relationship, you say, Dear the soul of all of those whom I have ever harmed in relationship, kept them from having healthy, loving, supportive relationships. Please come. Lot fuller room. Many, many souls come. Continue to repeat. I love you. I honor you. Deeply appreciate you. I wish to apologize for all lifetimes when I have not been grateful for the relationship, when I have not honored you, when I have not given you respect for your intelligence, your beauty, your strengths, when I have not honored and respected your weaknesses. Please forgive me. For each and every relationship I have ever been in, when I have not been honoring and respectful of your words, your opinions, your actions. Please forgive me in this and all time if I have made vows of love to you and broken those vows. If I have made vows to be with you forever to love you forever and then did not. Please forgive me 
if I have been adulterous in any relationships to any souls, please forgive me if I have caused you to have fear about leaving you, abandonment in relationships. Please forgive me if I have ever caused you to worry about our love in a relationship. Please forgive me if I have ever caused you to be depressed in relationship because I was not loving, not present, distant, not honoring or respectful. If I had done things in relationships where the end result was your depression in the relationship, I sincerely apologize. Please forgive me if I have ever done anything in a relationship by thoughts, words, or actions where you remained in a place of significant anxiety about the relationship. Please forgive me if I have ever done anything in a relationship that has caused you to suffer with great sadness or grief. If I left you, if I uh, uh, died and you ended up in sadness or grief or left the relationship and you ended up in significant sadness and grief. If I have done anything in a relationship where you have had significant fear. In any and all cases, if I have done anything in a relationship that has inhibited me from attracting healthy, loving, honoring, respectful, supportive relationships, relationship with love, attention, nurturing, in any time, if I have harmed any souls in these ways, I humbly and sincerely apologize. I ask your unconditional forgiveness because I wish you all to know I have learned my lessons. In my current relationships, I wish them to improve or dissolve whatever is according to my soul's guidance, not my mind. My soul will guide the best benefits and outcome. And I am grateful either direction I just wish to not be in pain anymore. I ask for your unconditional forgiveness and I offer all of these souls. If you have ever brought these sufferings to me in this lifetime or in any lifetime, I 100% unconditionally release you of your karmic debt to me. I wish for us to Resolve fully and completely these blockages and move forward in love and peace and harmony. Dear the source song of love, peace and harmony, my Tao song of love, peace and harmony I just received. Can you please turn on as I chant love, peace and harmony. Each and every time I play the song, each and every time I chant this song, I ask you to please bless my relationships so that I can release the blockages and gather to me the highest and best quality relationships. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So with your eyes closed we will chant, we will serve all of those souls and we will receive their love, their peace, their harmony, their forgiveness because they are offering it to us also. The ones that we are very disgruntled with are offering us their love and peace and harmony. See it, offer it, and receive it. Let us chant. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lu. La li lu la, lu la ha li lu la, lu la ha li lu la. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai chen ren li, wang li rong 
儿暮时生，生爱平安的些，相爱平安的些。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lu la, lu la li. La lu la la li, la lu la li lu la, lu la ha li lu la, lu la li lu la. 我爱我心儿灵，我爱突然然泪。黄陵容，哈尔木石上，相爱平安和谐，相爱平安和谐。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Now I will chant for you. I'm going to give you a visualization. I want you to imagine that the soul or souls across from you are. They're there. Their heads are bowed. The power is emanating between you. There is a need for an offering. In between you are lays, the Hawaiian kind of lays, flower lays. There is a stack of flower lays for all of the souls that have ever harmed you, and you have ever harmed. I want you to pick up the lays. And put them on the people. Ask them to help you put the lays on others. And when you do this, kiss each other's cheek. Offer forgiveness. Continue. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. They're saying, "I forgive you. Please forgive me." As you do this. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lu la lu la li. Lu la lu la la li. La lu la li lu la lu la li lu la lu la li lu la. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Now, if there are still souls left that have not received a lay, pick up all the lays with one hand or with both hands. Pick them up, all of them. Throw them in the air, and they all float down on top of the shoulders of each of those souls. Every soul now has received a lay. Repeat: I forgive you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Bowing your heads to all these souls. Please forgive me. I forgive you. 
please forgive me. And now, offer your gratitude to heaven, Tao, and Source, to all of the beings of light that have served you in this practice. Bow your head. Thank you, God. Thank you, my Creator. Thank you to all of the beings of light who served here today. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you are present, open your eyes, share the power of this experience for you. I do recommend that you earmark this one <coughs> and uh, save it because this is a very powerful practice. It will solve a great deal of your problems in all of your life because gratitude cannot happen when we wallow in the past and when we're stuck in the future. When you listen to this one or more times, you will start to get the visual imagery. Are you the donkey sitting on your butt crying about the past? Are you the bull getting pulled around by the nose by the fear of the future? When you get it, when you sit with this and the teachings and you get it, you will never again allow yourself to be the donkey or the bull. You will be in control and you will choose to stay in forgiveness. You will choose to stay, excuse me, in gratitude, but you will use the gratitude to see the flaws of what has brought you the various imbalances and you will use the gratitude to work through the practices. You will use the treasure you just received, the Tao song of love, peace and harmony, soul song, <clears throat> and you will use it to clear your blockages. Stay in the present moment, not while I'm in the past, not while I'm in the future. You will have great, great success by applying the wisdom and the blessings taught in this live stream. So I'm read some of your comments. Great seeing colors, emotional, crying again, feeling very blessed. The wisdom is there, guys. It's the application of it that makes it work. So please, please, please do your part. Remember, this is not Paul wisdom. This is heaven, Tao wisdom. This is the stuff that changes your life forever. You must learn it, apply it, practice with it. Be consistent. If you're not enjoying being the donkey or the bull, step up to the plate and stop being the one that gets dragged around by the nose. Many, many positive comments. You're very welcome. Today was good. I can always tell when I'm in flow, when I'm offering a teaching that can make a big difference for people. So if you missed it, you missed a good one. Go back, watch it from the beginning. Bookmark that particular video, you know. Open the video on its own page and bookmark it. Keep it in your browser. Come back to it. Make an agreement that you'll watch it every day for a week, okay? I don't care how busy you are. If you do it every day for a week, then you are instilling a, 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 in, an intelligence. You're instilling a practice. You're instilling a huge, huge opportunity to change your life and quit the whining and the complaining to manifest a much, much better, brighter future. Not only for your relationships, but for everything, okay? I tell you, this was a good one today, guys. Follow my guidance. All right. As always, you can receive a crown chakra blessing for gratitude wherever the blockage areas in your life. You can't find gratitude for, not, for all the suffering you received in the past. Therefore, it's keeping you from a new relationship. Get a crown chakra blessing. You can't find gratitude with the person that's in your current relationship. Get a crown chakra blessing. What's the difference? you will be able to learn and apply everything that I've been teaching you with much greater ease. You'll be able to not be in a place of stress. Okay. Crown chakra blessings alone for relieving stress are awesome. Awesome. I can't tell you how awesome they are for relieving stress. Um, so uh, it's always available. Um, let me know if I can serve you. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Today is Wednesday, so I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to focus on gratitude for self, okay? So if you are already grateful for who you are, don't need to be here. But if you're not, I suggest you come back. 
Tell your friends, make sure you share. If you're new, hit the subscribe. There were definitely not enough people today. This was very valuable. Make sure other people know about it. Bye-bye, everybody.